Hello students. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about gap penalty and penalty schemes. When we perform sequence alignment of DNA or protein sequences, in order to optimize the alignment at some places, we have to place the gap. And that gap represents either insertion or deletion mutation among the sequences. Now that gap has to be penalized with the gap penalty value and that value have to be subtracted from the total alignment score. So in this lecture, we will discuss what is gap penalty and the two schemes of gap penalty that is affine gap penalty and constant gap penalty. When we perform sequence alignment, then the residues among the two sequences either match with each other, like in this example, A, A match, or they mismatch with each other, like in this case, C, T mismatch, or at some places, we have to put the gap. Again, you can see in this alignment of the two DNA sequences that some of the residues are matching with each other, like G, G match, A, A, T, T, C, C, and AA and at some places we have put the gap in order to maximize the chances of alignment of these residues and that is called as the optimum alignment. So the total score in this case is 5. The alignment score is 5. If you give one score for each matching residues then the total matching residues or total matching nucleotides among these two sequences are 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the total alignment score would be 5. Similarly, if you put the gap at some other location, still the score of the alignment is 5. That is G, G, A, A, T, T, C, C and A, A. So what we have done here that instead of placing a gap at the position of the T, we place the gap in between A and T and still the alignment score remains same. But if you do not place the gap in this example, then the total alignment score would be only 4. The 4 score will come if you do not place the gap uh, in between these two sequences. So gap is very important to maximize the chances of alignment of the residues among two sequences means to optimize the alignment because whenever we align two sequences we have to consider that these sequences have undergone mutation and maybe some sequences have uh, undergone the insertion mutation or some sequences may have undergone the deletion mutation so in order to uh, reflect that in the sequence alignment at some places we place the gap and that gap penalty have to subtract it from the total score. So let us understand what are gap penalties. When we perform optimum sequence alignment between the sequences, it often involves applying gaps that represent insertions and deletions. In natural evolutionary processes, insertion and deletions are relatively rare in comparison to substitution. So during the course of evolution, the substitution mutation frequency is more as compared to insertion and deletion mutation. So whenever we introduce the gap, it should be made more difficult computationally reflecting the rarity of insertional and deletion events in evolution. But however, assigning penalty values can be more or less arbitrary. Because there is no evolutionary theory to determine a precise cost for introducing insertions and deletions. When we perform sequence alignment of two or more sequences, we determine the total alignment score by analyzing the matches and mismatches among the sequences. Now from the total alignment score, we have to subtract the penalty value that we should give for placing the gap. Now there is a problem. If penalty values are set too low, gaps can become too numerous to allow even non-related sequences to be matched up with highly similarity score. If the penalty values are set too high, then gaps may become too difficult to appear and reasonable alignment cannot be achieved, which is also unrealistic. So 
Through empirical studies for globular protein, a set of penalty values have been developed that appear to suit most of the alignment purposes. Another factor to consider here is a cost difference between opening a gap and extending an existing gap. It is known that it is easier to extend a gap that has already been started. Thus, gap opening should have a much higher penalty than gap extension. So let us understand it with one example. Suppose there is a DNA sequence which has undergone a deletion mutation. Now that deletion mutation while performing the sequence alignment, we have to represent in the form of gaps. When that mutation event occur at that time, the initiation of the deletion mutation was difficult as compared to extension of the deletion. Means the further nucleotide deletion was much more easier as compared to the beginning of the event of deletion mutation. So that has to be reflected while providing the gap penalties also. Here, the opening gap penalty should be high as compared to extending gap penalty. Now, this is based on the rationale that if insertion and deletions ever occur, several adjacent residues are likely to have been inserted or deleted together. Now, these differential gap penalties are also referred to as affine gap penalties. The normal strategy is to use preset gap penalty values for introducing and extending the gaps. For example, one may use the scheme of minus 12 and minus 1. So whenever you place the gap, you have to subtract the gap penalty from the total alignment score. Like in this case, you have to subtract minus 12 from the total score for the opening of the gap and you have to subtract minus 1 for each extending gap from the total score. So in this scheme, gap opening penalty will be minus 12 and the gap extension penalty will be minus 1. The total gap penalty is a linear function of the gap length, which is calculated using the formula W is equal to gamma plus delta multiplied by K minus 1, where gamma is the gap opening penalty, delta is the gap extension penalty, and K is the length of the gap. So you simply find out what is the length of the gap? How many numbers of nucleotides are missing there? And simply you, uh, you put the minus 12 penalty for the opening of the gap and minus 1 penalty for the extension of, of the gap. And you put those values in, into this formula, you will get total gap penalty. Now this total gap penalty have to be subtracted from the total alignment score to get the final alignment score. Besides the affine gap penalty, there is another penalty scheme which is called as constant gap penalty. It is sometimes also used which assign the same score for each gap position regardless whether it is opening or extending. So here in constant gap penalty, we assign the same penalty value for the opening of the gap as well as extension of the gap. However, this penalty scheme has been found to be less realistic than the affine gap penalty. Gaps at the terminal regions are often treated with no penalty because in reality, many true homologous sequences are of different length. Consequently, end gaps can be allowed to be free to avoid getting unrealistic alignments. So whenever the gaps are present at the end, no penalty values are subtracted from the total score because many homologous sequences are of different length. So end gaps, they are not penalized and uh, the score is not subtracted or the penalty is not subtracted from the total score of the alignment. Thank you. Thank you very much.